Okay, let's get started. So remember, the first line is a comment, and we'll talk about multi-line comments a little bit later. But essentially, what it is is it's a forward slash, and it's got an asterisk and an uh, ending forward slash. Now, if I were to put the ending asterisk forward slash, and let me just um, separate this so you can see what this has done is it has created all of this file in a single comment, and it said, "Hey, I, I don't." I don't want to compile this essentially. Comments do not get compiled. They are ignored completely by the, pro, uh, the, the compiler. Multi-line comments are great for having only a, to hide, to gray out essentially a certain a bit of code. Um, now if we were to gray this out and compile it and run it, it would give us errors saying, oh my actor source file has um, nothing it, it would give us errors about our source file saying oh there's no uh, namespace of a my actor and blah 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 essentially it would be bad so let's delete that multi-line comment and let's kind of start with these three lines and we'll start from the bottom up so this line is saying hey include my actor dot generated dot h well what is include? Well, include is a directive. And a directive causes whatever file, so in our case, we're generating a file, and it causes those, it causes whatever's generated or pre programmed inside here to be included into our, our header file. This is so we can define the physical layout of our code. So this one is allowing our program to examine mod and modify the behavior and structure of our code, um, specifically stuff like metadata, properties and functions, values of different things um, at runtime. We're able to modify this stuff at runtime. So that's really useful for us. This is called reflection and you can look it up there but essentially it's so that we can modify the behavior and structure of our program at runtime. That's really helpful for us. This next line is also include directive, but it's saying, hey, let's include this pre-programmed actor.h. And essentially, what an include directive is, like I said before, it's, it causes whatever's in this file to be essentially copied and pasted into the single line. And it's just giving us the ability to view whatever in this file in the file that we're in now. The next line above that is pragma once. This is a this is also a directive, but it's a preprocessor directive. Now there are different um, preprocess directives. Um, this this preprocessor directive is called pragma once, which is telling the compiler, hey we only want to include this file once in the compilation so it, if you've ever heard of include guards this allows for guarding safeguarding against various different things um, it's it allows for the improvement of compilation speed it helps for um, other things that we might not want to get into, um, there are some caveats to actually using Pragma once, but for us, this is great. We don't really want to mess with other types of include guards because this is a one line include guard that gives us a bunch of advantages, more advantages than caveats. So. It's really important that all of your header files include this line. 
so let's let's start from this. The, we'll look at this one, and we'll go from top to bottom. This U, oops, this U class is a macro. Now, a C++ macro is also a preprocessor directive. A macro says, hey, whenever we come to a certain identifier, we're going to replace that identifier with a replacement. You don't have to really get, you don't really have to know too much about um, a macro, but essentially it says like I said before it replaces an occurrence of a specific identifier and replaces it with the replacement said by the thing so you'll notice that a macro does not have a semicolon but some of these other statements have a semicolon now this lets uh, macros and rather process preprocessor directives in general do not have a semicolon uh, expected at the end of it because in a preprocessor directive what it does is it looks for a new line and once it's done reading this entire line of code it will go then on to the next line auto magically so that's a macro if you ever see a, a if in all caps you is usually um a macro so this is a macro function or method this is also a macro this essentially um, so let, let's start with class class is a keyword in C++ that says hey I want to create a class this next bit is also a preprocessor directive and it's saying hey this is the project that I want to be included in essentially now when we created my actor you'll notice that there is an a preceding my actor and this is a naming convention naming conventions are really important especially following the UE4 naming convention because if we don't follow them then our code looking at our code and looking at epic based code is going to be a little it's going to be different and it may run the same but if we don't use naming conventions we'll be uh, it will if we don't it will lose out on the ability to certain things like for example for us in this case this actor has been denoted by an a which means that it is an actor so if this actor class was called Bob we wouldn't know that this it was uh, an actor unless we went into Bob and looked at him and looked at his extending this so that just tells us that this is an actor all by itself uh, and we don't have to go into the file and look around for Bob and find out we can just see it in the code and automatically assume that it's an actor because that's the naming convention now this colon public a actor again you'll notice that a actor is an actor so it makes sense that it would have an a in it this is the way to extend something and we are extending a public class of actor you'll notice underneath this it has a opening block and at the bottom here there's a closing bo block with a semicolon this class this is the class's block now you'll also see this other preprocessor directive this is also a function or method um, macro which does some things essentially this u class and generate a body macro allows this class to be viewed by the editor so if I were to look in here look in my um, UE4 editor and I went to C++ classes went into my project and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to close it out and I'm gonna in here in my IDE press control F5 if you're working with uh, Microsoft Visual Studio you press control F5 and for Xcode I'm sorry but I don't know the hotkey to automatically build and run but there should be something noting that in the documentation 
So it will delete my old hot reload files, which is good because remember when we deleted that pawn? You may have noticed in the UE4 editor there was a my pawn in the C++ classes and that was bad because we didn't actually have a my pawn and we needed to rerun the editor and essentially get rid of that because we had deleted it in the previous video. Um, so that's why I'm rerunning it so we get rid of that and there's no there's nothing in there that doesn't actually exist. So like I said I'll go to C++ classes into my project and you'll see game mode and you'll see my actor. Now this is my actor if I did not have these U class and generated body and um, this macro CPP video underscore API these three uh, preprocessor directives allows reflection to happen and like I said before reflection is the ability to modify our program during runtime and essentially right now it's during runtime so I can go in here and I can go edit and what will happen is it will automatically open my actors header file we already had it open but it would have opened it for us this allows us to edit things in a way and can recompile it and have the changes be reflected upon hence the name reflection so let's from there that point we can really stop talking about preprocessor directives and directives in general but you'll notice down here under the generated body this public keyword says hey anything below this public keyword uh, specifier is saying that all of this code below is public and able to be accessed now if you type in say um, a function that was called begin play to um, this begin play to function would not be publicly accessible it would be private and you can type in private um, colon if I can spell it right um, but you don't need to that you don't actually have to put private um, so you can delete that and yeah I just wanted to show you the difference between public and private but we'll, we will get into a little bit more of that later on 